I'm extremely excited to make this video because of one of the pieces of vinyl that I just added to my collection. It might not be worth the most, but it is by far one of my favorites and probably in my top three, and it's from one of the most important bands in my collection. This is gonna be a pretty cool vinyl story, so stick around, I hope you enjoy it. I vividly remember I was 15 years old. I had just recently joined my first band that played only original rock music called Asparilla Mint. And they had a makeshift independent magazine operating out of a row home in a town that I used to live in. Little did I know I would discover one of the most important and influential bands ever to me. And that band is The Poets of Rhythm. But that is not the name that I found them under. Apparently they have numerous groups and names that we're gonna get into here. The magazine was called the What It Is Journal and I thought this was going to be the next Rolling Stone and I was gonna be the first rock drummer slash journalist. The one thing that this magazine had going for it at the time was the fact that social media and even the internet was barely a thing. This was 1996. So we're even pre AOL discs here. I'm heavily dating myself, but the magazine was there. And if bands wanted to get noticed, they sent their physical press kits with CDs or cassettes to anyone and everyone they could. In one of the offices slash rooms, there was a bin labeled new music. And I would sort through it trying to find any new music or awesome bands that I could find. And here are some of those bands. We ended up actually playing out with a lot of these groups, which was pretty cool to do at the time. But this CD right here really jumped out to me. This is Acid Jazz, Original Raw Soul, Volume 1. And at the time, and to be honest, still, I think to myself, what is Acid Jazz? I was a rock drummer at the time and was heavily into Dave Grohl and John Bonham, and I wanted to start exploring jazz, but it was a little too heady for me, and at the time I thought, well, maybe I would like Acid Jazz. Well, whatever Acid Jazz is, this CD is not it. I thought that this was a compilation. It looks like a compilation, and I thought it was from a bunch of old funk bands from back in the 60s. When I listened to it at first, it sounded like it was recorded in the 60s, but to be honest, I was insulted by the sound and production on this whole thing the first time I ever listened to it. The second track, Spooky Grinder, the bass drum on this track, it sounded like someone just barely put a head on it and on only one side and it was about to fall off. I was so meticulous with my sound at the time. I didn't know what the hell I was doing in terms of playing drums, but this was blasphemy, I thought. How could they let this bass drum sound like this? I wish I could play it for you right here. I'm actually gonna try to play it for you right here and see if YouTube picks it up. Definitely check in the description and you can listen to a link on it. There's somebody else that put it out there. But the more I listened to this, the more I fell in love with it. So much so that I basically drifted out of that band and that magazine all together in search for a funk band. I couldn't take this CD out of my CD player and it was one of the only CDs I had at the time. Now, we gotta put this into context here. This is pre-internet or at least pre-high-speed internet at home. This is definitely pre-discogs. I had no idea what I was listening to at the time and the only way I could find out was reading through the inner sleeve which really just talks about each individual song. So to me, this was all rare grooves that were never released by some funk groups in Detroit or Philly or New York City in the 60s or 70s that were heavily inspired by James Brown. I was so wrong. Flash forward to 2002, I start listening to and find Sharon Jones and the Daptone label. And there was that sound again, that drum sound that was so raw and so funky and all of it sounded similar to this acid jazz compilation, but it wasn't exactly the same. I fell in love with Daptone. I found Sugarman 3 and I found the Budos Band and I started going back into their previous label, Desco Records and even Soulfire Records. And I was finding all these groups that had this raw funk soul sound. Some people refer to it as deep funk. And then Daptone put this record out. The Poets of Rhythm Practice What You Preach reissue. And there it was, the sound. 
that drum sound that was so recognizable to me. And some of the songs from Practice What You Preach are actually on this compilation. And that is when the code cracked. It turns out that this compilation is basically by the same group of guys. And this wasn't from the US at all. It was from Germany in the late 90s. The Poets of Rhythm were the first incarnation, followed by the Woo Woos, the Bus People Express, the Soul Saints Orchestra, the Whitefield Brothers, Bo Barrel, and basically they're all the same people. And I had this compilation from a defunct magazine from 1996 in Linwood, Pennsylvania. This blew my mind and really cemented to me that Daptone knew what they were doing. Gabriel Roth and Neil Sugarman not only knew who the Poets of Rhythm were, they knew their story and through the label were able to resurrect this band. I felt this immediate kinship with Daptone. Keep in mind, I've never met or been to Daptone Records. I would love to go. I actually got a chance to hang out with Tommy T and T Brennick once at a Budos Band concert, and he later got me into a Sharon Jones show, but that's a whole other story. I thought I was the only person who knew about this CD and I was wrong. And I keep being wrong about a lot of this stuff and maybe I still am. So definitely comment below if you know better and definitely comment below if you're from Daptone or the Poets of Rhythm. I would love for you guys to see this. I started seeking out all of the Poets of Rhythm stuff at this point. And then I found this one, which is their first release of Discern Define on Quantum Projects. And this was really when I realized that these guys were ahead of their time or behind their time, if you wanna say that, whatever you wanna look at it that way. I feel like today they would have been widely accepted, but in 1993, no one was playing James Brown style funk. And if you did, you were just a gimmick. People called Lee Fields Little James Brown forever. And we'll get into Lee Fields. I have a ton of his stuff. But then I found a great website for vinyl called DustyGroove.com. And a lot of my collection of funk and jazz actually started there. They have a deep funk category. And at last, I found tons of other labels like Daptone, Now and Again Records, Love and Hate, Stone's Throw, Ubiquity, at the time, Truth and Soul Records, which is now Big Crown Records, the Funk 45 label, Soul Jazz Records, Jazzman Records. Some of these were new issue labels and some were old school funk and soul reissue imprint and repress labels. I found this LP, the Whitefield Brothers, in the Raw, which is actually a Soulfire Records LP. Soulfire was a precursor to Daptone Records, and I'm gonna get into them in another video in the future, but this is actually a group that was on this original Raw Soul CD that I had, and they are another iteration of the Poets of Rhythm. This is a real raw funk record. It has that raw soul funk sound along with that raw drum sound that we were talking about earlier. It's raw! You should definitely check out this LP if you get a chance to. Daptone Records then released this, the Poets of Rhythm Anthology, along with a never heard track that's on it. And this really brought the story together and finally made me realize that this band and this compilation I found were way more important to me than I realized. I just picked up this LP, which is actually pretty hard to find these days. As you can see here, all the different iterations of the bands are on here and how they recorded under, and there it is, the original Raw Soul Volume 1. At this point, I was now amassing the entire Soulfire Records 45 collection, we just talked about them, and I was also finding out about stuff like Northern Soul that's happening in England. It was all related and part of this kind of same scene, essentially. I later found out that there was an original Raw Soul Volume 2 that was available on CD, and then at this point, Discogs was still not the beast that it is today. So finding all the versions of a release or the entire discography was not as easy as it is now. You kids have it easy today. This anthology is really awesome though. It comes in a really awesome gatefold and Daptone did a really good job with this. There's an entire, the entire story of the Poets of Rhythm is in this thing. So really, if you can get your hands on this or either on CD or on LP, this is definitely the way to go to find out about this band at this point. If I would have had this from the beginning, it would have probably solved a lot of things for me. Let's just go over all the remaining Poets of Rhythm and iterative groups, 
pieces of vinyl I have. Daptone released some of these 45s in their first 100, and I have all of the first 100. This poster back here is actually from the 100th. This is a clear Bus People Express 45. Bus People Express was another iteration of the Poets of Rhythm, and this is a clear variation reprint from Daptone Records from the first 100, and it is the original label with Hot Pie and Candy Records, which I really like here. Another from the Daptone imprint label, Eversoul Records. This is their purple copy of The Path of Life backed with Smiling While You're Crying. This is a really awesome 45. I love this song, and this is also from the first Daptone 100, so this is the purple variation. I love this record. Daptone also put out a reissue of Discern Define, which is really awesome. I have the white label indie variant, which is this orange swirl. They also have like a translucent orange, I think it is, that has a blue label that I will eventually get at some point that's the label edition. I think there's like only three or 400 of those available, but this is a gatefold edition of the first record that we talked about earlier from Quantum Projects. And this gatefold edition is actually so much nicer. I think they also remastered the record too, um, but it is a better packaging and I think just a better presentation of the Poets of Rhythm in this iteration. I also have here another Whitefield Brothers LP, which is from Stone's Throw Now and Again Records. This is The Gift featuring Eden and Mr. Liff. This is a pretty awesome, crazy record. Now they get pretty far out in this one, further away from like the deep funk, groovy sound and more into like explorations of other sounds with auxiliary percussion, kind of like Afro funk, if you will. But this came out in 2009. So this is also a very cool record, probably easily to find on Discogs. You should definitely try to get any one of these records on Discogs. I also have from the Whitefield Brothers their original 45s from Soulfire Records, including The Bastard and In the Raw, which this is a fantastic record. Probably a little hard to find at this point, but if you can get your hands on it, it's very cool. Sometimes these aren't very expensive to get, so you should definitely take a look for them. I also have this cool 10 inch. This one's on a 10 inch record, but it's still a 45. And it's one of my only 10 inch records that I have that's a 45. They call it a super single from Soulfire Records. Again, I have all of the Soulfire 45s, so we're going to get into a video in the future about Soulfire Records. Whitefield Brothers and Poets of Rhythm were a big part of that. And also, I have a Jazzman Records. This is the Soul Saints Orchestra, Santa's Got a Bag of Soul. This is an awesome Christmas record. I play it every year at Christmas time. It's a super funky Christmas record. I'm gonna put a link down to the description to some of these Poets of Rhythm tracks, just cause they are kind of hard to find. Maybe put, some people put them on YouTube and you guys can listen to them and tell me what you think about them in the comments, but the Poets of Rhythm are sick. And this track is very cool. It's a funky soul Christmassy track. There's one other record that I have that I actually don't have in my possession at the time. It's coming in from Europe and it's from a group called Syrup called Different Flavors that came out in 2000. This is a much smoother funk record and it's a little bit more produced than the normal Poets of Rhythm stuff, but it's all from the same guys again and it's extremely funky. I was able to get this gem again on Discogs in Germany, shipped to the States, so very cool. Definitely check out Syrup. I don't have it yet or I would put it into this video. It's still shipping to me. And now that brings us full circle to this piece of vinyl which is now one of my most treasured and possibly in the top three of what I own. This is the original Raw Soul Volume 1 compilation, the original from 1995 called Ooh Ooh Hot Pie and Candy Presents Original Raw Soul Volume 1. This does not mention acid jazz anywhere on it. This is even a nice gatefold with the entire story, which I really wish was in the original compilation CD that I have. A lot of this was resurrected for that anthology that I showed earlier for the Poets of Rhythm by Daptone Records. I just realized that this existed thanks to Discogs. And now, thanks to Discogs, I own it. And I had to get it from Greece. So shout out to Nico Skaukos on Discogs. 
He's got vinyl for sale, so go check that out. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description. I'm so grateful for this. It was shipped safely to the United States and I found it for a great price. It is worth so much more to me. This is the original compilation that I found in 1996 as this CD at a time when I was just growing in my music life. And I was only 15 years old and this really has shaped so much of my tastes and my collection and even how I find music today. It was so cool to search out all this stuff and to find it this way. And now I have it on vinyl and I'm very, very, very excited for that. My first love for listening to music is no longer even rock music. I now love raw funk and soul music, this kind of funk and soul music, the kind that the poets of rhythm were making back in the mid 90s when we were all being dazzled by Nirvana and Pearl Jam. These Germans picked up our broken pieces of funk and soul and put it back together. I found this poster and it hangs on my living room wall as soon as you walk into my house. This is a promo for the anthology album, but it has this quote, the band that convinced me that soul music wasn't dead, Gabriel Roth, who, if you don't know, is one of the founders of Daptone Records and a sick, sick bassist and songwriter himself. This band, Poets of Rhythm, convinced me as well. They've shaped my entire music collection, and through them and the bands that they have inspired, I have better music in my collection and in my world. So I'm grateful to them, and I would love to see them or another album by them on Daptone or some imprint or whatever. They do have new music in other forms out there today, and I'll get into that in a future video if I can. There's like so many different little iterations of their groups out out there but the poets of rhythm one of the most important bands in my collection there's also a volume two and a volume three of this original raw soul series that i think is now picked up by now and again records which is also another great record label if you learned something here today or if you found some new music take a minute and let me know in the comments or by liking or subscribing it really means a lot i really appreciate the time that people take to watch these videos and i love sharing my vinyl collection and checking out new music with people i've got a bunch of new videos coming out in the future so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them and i hope to see you guys on the next one